So why am I doing this Theranos project? I read the John Kerry Rue book, Bad Blood. I watched the Hulu series, The Dropout. I have watched countless Elizabeth Holmes interviews on YouTube. The publicity about medical laboratories was not good, but the story is not even close to being representative of what takes place in a modern hospital laboratory. I thought I would seek out a sample of real medical laboratory scientists to share not only what was incomprehensible about the Theranos one-drop blood testing system, but how it should have been done. Issues like quality control, linearity, sample size, pre-dilution, and more can make eyes glaze over. The trained medical laboratory scientist, though, is laser-focused day in and day out on these topics. Theranos treated them as interruptions, as unimportant interruptions, in their pursuit of personal fortune and fame. Watch now as real medical laboratory professionals share the correct way to analyze the specimens that impact your health and your life. Can't believe they got this far with it without FDA approval. It blow. It shows how much these business moguls have no idea what's going on. You can't be testing people without FDA approval. I didn't realize how big it had gotten. I mean, I knew that there was this like group doing this thing and all that, but I didn't realize like how big the company had gotten or anything. Um, it was after they got, you know, in a lot of trouble that I started going, what, what were they trying to do? Um, and even more recently, seriously, within the last two years where I've actually done more of the reading and more of the, oh my gosh, what were they doing? Instruments out there that accept one drop. You know, we have coagulation instruments that you can do one drop, but it tests for one thing. We have glucose instruments that have one drop and it tests for one thing. The problem is they said they could do so many different things with one drop that it's just not feasible because the chemistry behind each test you do, you need a, at least one drop per se for every test. And so they said things like that and it doesn't work that way. When I heard that, I just couldn't believe she was claiming that. I mean, we run tests on babies all the time. And yes, we use a very small sample size and we can barely run four tests on it. So I had no idea where she was getting that. And a sample size that small, you know, you're going to have to dilute it. And then those results are going to be skewed. Uh, and also the finger prick, the, that blood compared to the blood in the vein the composition of proteins and lipids, it's totally different. That doesn't, that doesn't work. I, I think the biggest issue was that they didn't know the basics behind how it was normally done. You know, they kind of like just started doing this stuff without even understanding the science between the regular, behind the regular tests. Um, if they had started out, I mean, some of the greatest technologies we've got have started out with med techs that have an idea because they understand the basic science and how to improve it. Coming up with something totally new without understanding the basic science doesn't make sense. I mean, when we were watching the dropout, when they suddenly opened the instrument to see how it worked, it hit me like they had no idea how testing was normally done. And they were trying to come up with something new and exciting. Once again, you know, it's results that are coming out, they're within a range and you're comparing it to that standard. And uh, like when I think of quality control, it's I'm making sure that the reagents that are on my analyzer are giving out results that are correct and that are in a specific range that are set by the hospital or the company that's giving out the reagents. How is we run quality control um, every day, multiple times a day to make sure that our instruments are actually reporting out the correct results. So for example, I'll have a vial of quality control that says, if I run it on this instrument, the range should be approximately this to this based on the studies that we have done in our facility. If I run my vial and my range is supposed to be 120 to 140 milligrams per deciliter, 
and I'm getting 145 milligrams per deciliter, that's telling me that my instrument is off. Something is off. Either my um, reagents, something's wrong with my reagents, something's wrong with some tubing in the instrument, something's wrong with um, something got dirty. There's so many different things that can go wrong in an instrument that when your QC is off, when your quality control is off, it'll help us pinpoint that there's a problem, fix the problem before we misanalyze patient specimens. was not doing quality control correctly. Um, there was the one example in the document, uh, the, the docu-series on Hulu, where they came in and they just typed in some numbers to ignore the quality control that was running out. Um, and at that point, the character was very upset by it because she actually understood the importance of quality and was told that it wasn't a big deal and just to keep going. Somebody in a lab that I was running wasn't following our quality control. There would definitely be reprimands and we'd probably go through the entire you know, cycle if they did not continue, if they continued not to follow the rules, we'd have remediation and eventually you'd be fired because if you're not following quality control processes within the lab, you're reporting out bad specimens. And then when I realized that I can still help people, but truly be behind the scenes, that was the big selling point for me. I get to do science, I'm behind the scenes, and that's my favorite part about it. The medical laboratory scientist career is great for anyone who loves science and wants to use their love of science to help people. Our field is great when it comes to the heavy sciences because you get to use that and you're daily using your knowledge and your ability and your education to help people. And it's a really rewarding career.